Hello everyone, welcome to day two coverage of the Junior Grand Prix here in Linz, Austria. We are on the first medal event for this week, the Paris Free Program. It's a tight race for gold and silver between two North American teams, with the Canadians currently holding the lead, but just by 1.65, and the Americans will hotly contest for gold. So this should be interesting, and for third, the Chinese and French teams are positioned well to battle for podium spot. So my colleague, Mark Hadready, and I will bring you coverage of 10 teams from nine nations as they take to the ice for the Paris Free Program, and it all starts right now. Welcome back, everyone, to Linz, Austria. Day two of coverage of the Junior Grand Prix as we fly over the facility here, the ice arena on the banks of the Danube. Such a beautiful location. It's a nice day outside. No more rain. First couple days was a little drizzly. And now, clear skies coming our way. We look inside the building live at the ice surface with the first group in the Paris Free Program about to take to the ice. This will be the first medal event of week number two in the Junior Grand Prix. Welcome into the broadcast, Mark Henready, joining us from Nottingham in the studio at home. Mark? Yeah, looking forward to see who will be not only the medalist as we see the lineup of the judges but also he'll be the first medalist of this Junior Grand Prix series. Obviously no pairs entered into Bangkok and Thailand last week, so this will set the scene for the, the pairs event on the series. And let's talk a little bit about that. We will have a pair event in Istanbul next week, and we will have pairs in Budapest and also in Gdansk. Yarvin will not have any pairs, and they'll finish out the Junior Grand Prix this season. As we take a look at the start order for the free program, and as we mentioned, as I mentioned in the opening, the North American teams battling for first and second, and the Chinese and French teams will be battling for podium. But, but who knows? Anything can happen. There could be a big switch here. 
so close between like, five points, just over five points between the first two groups. So that's a lift. And it, you know, when we think about the pairs, and certainly my experience of being on the Junior Grand Prix with you last year, Ted, was that at this stage in the season and with some young athletes, then you know, whilst we look at the seniors at Worlds and, and we assume that the lifts are somewhat a given, it's not necessarily the case so much on the juniors and they can be so valuable in the, the base value for the lift. Yeah, and we all take a look, you know, in, in this discipline, you've got the throw jumps that can stand up or they can go down. The individual jumps that can have mistakes as well. So there's lots of room, lots of risk, pardon me, in this program that can greatly change the total score number and move people up and down that list. So, uh, you know, lots can happen. We'll see what unfolds here. There clearly are sort of two different categories of young teams just learning the skills and may not have quite the skating skills yet or the pair of skills. You can see them under development and a couple teams at top that have some pretty nice pair of skills early on in this season. And you know, as much as we talked about how, how challenging this discipline is and, and how risky it can be, also lots more opportunities perhaps for the pair of skaters insofar as with less entrance then the, the chances of getting to the Junior Grand Prix final are increased and that you know, would be a huge accomplishment for any of the skaters and a great experience for learning too. A very, very good point. And of course, this discipline has only four events that they compete in. So all the other disciplines are in seven weeks of the Junior Grand Prix. So they have to make sure that the opportunities they have, and of course, whether it's pairs, dance, or singles, a team or a single skater can only go in two Junior Grand Prix events, but there's not enough pair teams around the world to cover off all seven events, so that's why they're in four. First place will get 15 points for the win here, following on down 13, 11, and nine, and top six teams get to the final in Beijing. Now, Mark, I think we had a question come in. Let's see. Oh, yes. You've been avoiding it, I know. Uh, <laughs> let's see what we got here. On your competitive career, or in your competitive career, what was your favorite element? Was it your twizzles? Was it, well, the, I, th know, was it the three turn or the rocker that you did? <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> shot fired shot. there. Yeah. Across, um, the bow. Across the bow. Across the bow. Well, if I go, if I go to my uh, free skating days, I used to love to jump. I mm. did love to jump. Who doesn't love jumping? Mm. And I actually remember, even though I couldn't land it, I loved working on triple axel. I remember the excitement of rotating and feeling like I was going through multiple G-forces trying to rotate three and a half times. Uh, but then as an ice dancer, to <laughs> on the back of being a single skater for so many years, when I was an ice dancer, doing the non-touching step sequence always seemed like, oh, thank goodness. I don't have to worry about somebody else for a minute. I can just deal with myself and I don't have to jump, so it seems easy. Okay. What about you? Well, you see, now I'm going to have to compete against you in this one. Okay, yeah. I, I, used to, I used to dance as well, but the fact that I just had pants on would allow me to pass my test because they needed partners so badly, right? <laughs> you know, and there were no twizzles in those days, that's for sure. Um, the last jump was my favorite because I would just okay. always feel very comfortable on that back outside edge and just could just time that takeoff and explode off the ice. It was, I just loved doing that jump. That was awesome. Yeah, I actually, yeah, I would say I like Lutz as well, but um, very dependent on the day. Some days I'd like a Sarko, some days I'd hate a Sarko, some days I'd like a Lutz, some days I would detest it. You like whatever worked, <laughs> right? <laughs> whatever was, yeah, being cooperative that day. And so your passion went to ice dance or did somebody just say, go to ice dance? How did you make that switch? <laughs> I think, I suppose, the thought for many of the skaters on the ice here now is when do you make that inevitable switch? Everybody seems to start, not everybody, but the majority of skaters will start in singles. Mm. For me, I was injured. I used to, um, when I did loops and flip takeoffs, I used to, put, like my ankle would drop in and I started mm. to get a lot of tendonitis. Yeah. Um, not optimal takeoff. And then I remember getting to an age where I was maybe 17, 18 and seeing Evgeny Plashenko, the Olympic champion, who was just one year older than me landing quad toe, triple toe, and I couldn't land triple axel and thinking maybe my chances of competing <laughs> at world championships are dependent on a, a little switch up. So yeah, um, that's when I decided to dance. Yeah. No question. Well, you know, and, and these skaters that we're watching right now, the pair of skaters obviously have all started in single skating and have made that switch over because, you know, as we talked about, there are different attributes of each individual that sort of lean them towards a particular discipline. 
And with Ice Dance, you know, those people who may not like to jump very much, but just love the, to perform, have great skating skills. And those special women in pair skating who said, yeah, throw me, let's, let's go, you know. And I love to be and up in the air. It's just, isn't it fascinating? I find, we talked about it last year, I remember vividly, the female pair skater, they mm. are an amazing mindset. And actually, some of them terrify me because they're so <laughs> steely, determined, and yeah. Yeah, they're amazing. pretty tough. There's no question of yes. that. Yeah, and they're usually the boss of the pair. So <laughs> <we'll see. laughs> here we go. And team number one, and we talked about the growing delegation from China after covid now we're starting to see a whole new generation of young Chinese athletes. First team out in the Paris Free Program, Yunji Wang and Hei Lin Liu. She's 15, he is 18. This is their very first Junior Grand Prix event. And they're coached by Bo Luan. And Mark talked about that coach. And we'll see how this free program unfolds here on the Junior Grand Prix.
Yunji Wang and Helen Liu from China start the pairs free skate. And I love the choreo sequence entry into the pairs combination spin. That, to me, the highlight of a program from a I, young team. I try to grab that out of the replay. We'll see if I got it or not. But you can clearly see this team is a little slower because they're just new and they're just being careful and getting experience with the stage of development they're at. These teams can obviously skate much faster than that, but not yet in competition as we take a look at the group five reverse of the most difficult because the woman is blind. She's trusting the man will get the hand and take her up on that. And that lift comes in at level three. And there's a look at the double flip, double toe. So that was well done. It's just not a lot of speed here. That's okay. They're throwing, trying to throw triples. Here's the throw triple Saoka on a lean in the air. A little bit over rotated as well. Didn't get a chance to take the free leg back. And look at that entry there. I got it, Mark. Hey. <laughs> I, I thought it was interesting in this pair's combo spin, it looked like Natalia Mishkatinuk, the coach that we'll see later on today, as we see the second of the two lifts. And just you can see that need to keep refining the positions, a little bit more stretch, a little bit more strength, and assuming a good position. And there's the second throw, triple loop, look to get around, but again, not on top of the landing foot. But you know, you can see the stage this team is at. They're comfortable with the throws, as most Chinese teams are very comfortable with throws. They learn that early on. And the skating skills still have some work as they grow and get stronger. And we'll see much more from this team in the future. Great to read it there. Choreographer is Wenjing Sui. And so they're accessing Olympic champion level input. So they're certainly in the right hands for seeing what is possible and, and recognizing that you know, their skating nation has produced the very best in the world and they'll hope to follow in those footsteps. Yeah, there's certainly a lot of wonderful experience in that country in pair skating. It's been the flavor of Chinese skating for many, many years. They've had great success on the Olympic level and the world level. Many world and Olympic champions. Started from their coach who was the first Chinese entrant in the Pierce discipline and I read that they used to learn at that stage in the early 80s from photographs. They didn't even have, I mean, nothing like what we have now where the skaters can go on YouTube and, mm. and watch their competitors. Yeah, well, you have to be ingenious in many ways to find a way to learn, watch the rest of the world and, and find out where you're at. Let's take a look at the scores for the free program. For Yunji and Heelin. 62.26, they're the first team out. For total competition score of 97.19. There you go, their first experience with the Junior Grand Prix. I hope to see them at another event. Our next team comes from Spain. 14-year-old Linda Denardin and 20-year-old Mauricio Romano Rossi Lopez. They're eighth after the short program. They're going to need a 58.52 to take the lead.
Linda Dinarda and Patricio Romano Rossi Lopez, the Spanish pair team that train in Austria. They relocated to Salzburg, Salzburg this spring. And wonderful to see how this team has combined their different directions of rotation. And it was just interesting to see which elements rotated in which, which directions. Yeah, really not easy for them and also for the judges to sort of keep track of the technical panel as well as we take a look at the twist. Good split. Pretty good catch as well. Level three on that double twist, so good points earned there. And here is the difficulty going in different directions. It's hard to keep track of that from a technical panel perspective, but also from the judges as well. I want to work to get a little closer on that. Here's the group five reverse lift. You can see she's blind going in. Good lift up, good flow across the ice in the turns. A little bit on the toe picks now and begins to slow down. interesting that Patrizio rotates naturally more comfortably, I think, clockwise, Linda anti-clockwise, and yet the lifts rotate the more conventional mm -hmm. way. It was great in the pairs combo spin they chose both. And here's a really good throw, double cycle lands. Look at the speed on that landing. Beautiful. Well done. Good mechanics. The triple should be relatively soon in their repertoire. As we look at the Ford inside death spiral, nice. Nice and low. And that is in at just a level one, but a good GOE. And then throw a double flip. That sort of just got twisted up a little bit in the air. But nice job. Good experience gained here. And as we said yesterday, the short program, Severin Keeper and Miriam Ziegler, their coaches, not long since retired from competition. Great inspiration, and I'm sure also knowing that there was a Spanish team at the last Olympics, that's motivation for them to know that they can repeat that, and that'll be the big goal for this team, I'm sure. Yeah, I'd be interested to talk to the coaches about the experience, but on the other side mm. of the boards, <laughs> and how much. And quite often, coach, uh, skaters who are also coaching talk about learning more when they're coaching when you're about coaching, themselves, yeah. you know, and going, oh, now I see what the coach means. <laughs> here, <laughs> here we go. Reluctantly. Yeah, exactly. The scores for Linda and Paricio is 63.36. Not of approval, and that'll put them first in the free program with a 102.04 for the competition. Second team out, but they take over the lead. Our next team comes from Germany. 15-year-old Elia Ackerman and 21-year-old Tobias Arms. And they're coached by Florian Just uh, and 69.48 personal best at the World Junior Championships last season. And they'll be skating to music by William Joseph.
Ah, oh, just such a disappointment at the end on the death spiral because otherwise I thought that was a great redemption for Elia Ackerman and Tobias Arms from Germany. They have worked hard in the offseason, but they struggled in the short program. And that looked like it was going much better. But what's best here is that there's a good interaction between the team despite that mistake at the end. Yeah, the, pro the program was going much better, no question. There was some confidence gained and desire for a little bit of redemption. There's a twi triple twist off the top that is in a level one. Watch this group five step lift, which steps up over the shoulder. Now this position needs an improvement. Get the legs back a bit further. Good core strength, grabs the blade for a feature. Working and, hard to Yeah, ride. and that, that hold is a little bit too high in the stomach. And so that will just take some work in that area. It's okay, here's the throw triple uh, double sow cow but we'll see the throw triple loop in a moment here it is good attempt good mechanics tight and straight and tight in the air just doesn't know quite when to open up and check that free leg back it's got to happen a little earlier before hitting the ice of course but good work here's the double lot says no problem with that a little far apart they'll work that a little closer in the senior and the in forward inside desk bar let's see what happens here watch his blade his right foot will just chatter a little bit here and slip right there. Back foot actually slipped off. And once the pressure is gone, the girl goes down and so does the gentleman as well. She reacted so well, straight back into the Yeah, feet. absolutely. And it's those types of experiences, not happy ones, but those type of experiences that gives you the type of experience next time out. The feeling of the pressure, the anchor of that pick, the pivot, if you will, in that death spiral. So important to be strong. And good to see them, including the split triple twist, including the throw triple mm. loop, obviously pushing the technical element score. And then they worked with German senior ice dance champion Benjamin Stefan on their choreography. So that's an attempt to push the components as well. Yeah, I think a great uh, strategy to get one of the throws triples in. You can see really good position in the air. So they're just in the stage of learning to compete, 62.88, that's second in the free program. And they have a total competition score of 99.67, which will put Alaya and Tobias currently into second place. Well, certainly experience gained here, and you can see some good skills under construction, and just more time, as with everyone. And this <laughs> the closeness of those scores. No, I know. I'm looking at that going, uh, wow. <laughs> it's like, okay, tied. <laughs> the next three teams are tied, essentially. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, it's a really good indication, Mark, of where the teams are in their development stage. When you have those scores at the same, it doesn't matter whether they're low or high scores, they're pretty much at the same stage of development. These teams, pair skating is really hard because you're a single skater and you're a team and a learn and each takes time to learn those individual skills and then to do it in competition when you really haven't had the years of experience and so you'll see the junior pair team generally speaking at a certain stage of development which the scores will be significantly lower than your top teams as has we touched on yesterday as we watched the british pair lucy and kyle not only, like you're saying, have they got their own elements to consider, but also they have their own emotional reaction yeah, to being in competition. Point. Different adrenalines, different nerves. And then the timing of the pairs obviously is so imperative from a success and safety aspect. And when adrenaline is coursing through your veins at a different rate than it would when you're in training, they just have to be as safe as is possible. It's, it's interesting, you know, all the top coaches certainly teach, they take the, the young man aside and said, say to him very maybe sternly or maybe directly will say at all costs you save your partner at all costs you save your partner so they're taught about safety from the very very beginning and um which is really you know really wonderful and it's the partnership between the two skaters sometimes when they're young it's a little awkward they don't know each other very well it takes a bit of time but that is what's important in the end of the day is the the, the work relationship on the ice and, you know, we, we've talked a little bit about ice dancers and their expressive <laughs> tendencies. And when we think of 
um, the male pair skaters, which we've, we've talked about the female pair skaters and how incredibly uh, tough they can be and resilient they can be. When I think about male pair skaters, they obviously are, as a, as a generalization, they tend to be the physically the strongest in our sport, but also they do have to have an element of, of tenderness and care because they are so responsible for the health and safety of another. I was about to take a replay on, I think it was the last team, or maybe it was team four, I'm not sure, and I could see the lift go up and the feet were shaking a little bit, just a little bit of a chatter on the play, but he stayed with that coasting to make sure he got safely comfortable to start the turns and you thought okay oh yes do you remember that it's going straight down yeah the ice. exactly and i didn't know if it was going to do a carry but i think it was just like you say a, a safety precaution yeah yeah very smart really appreciate that and i know that's a big part of the coaches training or teaching when they're starting a young team and uh and it's not easy i mean the men you get tired and then and the woman on top in the lift What's the job? The job is to be rigid and absolutely solid. Don't be moving around up top because that's going to sh shift the balance. And the, I, you know, the aspect for the women that's so amazing is that they look, you know, beautifully elegant in their top line and, and you know, reaching for the longest of necklines, trying to disguise perhaps any mindfulness of what might be happening down below. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> they're going, mm, he's feeling a little shaky down there. This doesn't but, feel so good. <laughs> yeah. No, but it's a, every each uh, skater has their own job and they have to be very good at their own job. Then the team starts to come become one. Just looking now, Ted, at the results in the free skate from the first group. We've talked about the proximity of scores after the short program. The scores of the first three teams separated by just over one point. So, wow. And I think that's really encouraging because then, of course, everybody wants to place higher, mm -hmm. but any of the teams can come away thinking, well, I'm in contention yes. with everybody else. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I would, I would say, and I don't know if this is right, but my after covering this for almost 10 years now, I would say that the Paris discipline, generally speaking, is a little weaker in the level of development that they're at because they generally will have only just started pairs. They would have been single skating for many years, so they wouldn't have had five or six or seven years of pair skating at this stage. So you'll see them a little bit more under construction, um, and then as time goes on, you'll see them transfer into you know top juniors and seniors. It just, just takes a little bit longer. That's such a, a really valid point, and we talked about or joke about me being a single skater and I'd said most people start in singles but that's not entirely the case there's a lot of centers where ice dance is a priority so mm -hmm. like you say you know ice dance is maybe formed earlier pairs definitely the, the later yeah. discipline to be established yeah exactly I did pairs uh, pair skating and I wasn't that strong so I was going like I'm going my poor partner you know <laughs> then I did pairs in the ice show too uh, like that I got some funny stories about that but <laughs> well, I, I did do pairs because I don't think I could be trusted with the strength that these guys have to display. Yeah. Well, you kind of did pairs and dance. There's so many acrobatic lifts nowadays and dances. And they're, they may not look as dangerous, but they're pretty risky. Yeah, and I suppose it just shows how the, not just fashions, but how the technical committees dictate so much of what the skaters do and definitely the dancers are getting more adventurous as they pursue higher levels and higher grades of execution. So things are very different than they were maybe a couple of decades ago. As we look at the next team about to skate their free program. A fairly tall team, well, not that tall, but size differential is a little less than some of the other teams. Both are strong skaters. As we see Polina Pullman and Gabrielle Rinaldi, 13 and 18 years of age, seventh after the short program, and they're going to need a 62.98 to take the lead. Fist pump to start the program, and they'll skate to the theme from, from Aladdin.
Well, a team here competing together in their first ever competition as a team. Two years ago, Gabriel Rinaldi competed in the Junior Grand Prix in Gdansk as a single skater, now here. I love the, it was a different expression. Mm -hmm. uh, Paulina had a beautiful smile at the end and said, <laughs> oh, that was great. And then Gabriel was, you know, the face of exhaustion, <laughs> right? So <laughs> that was great. But that was Survival. really solid, really well done. They looked a little worried coming into the program, just a little nervous. But let's take a look at some of the elements here. The patience to get synchronized on the, th on the triple sow cows and they get them done. Nice, great start to the program. And after that, we see the throw. Double sock up, a great technique, good flow on the landing. That's a good starting point. The group five step lift up. Look at her head up. The toes are turned out, the legs are apart, the back is strong. Good, that's just a base level, but that's intentional. Get quality scores and keep it simple at this stage of their development. Really well done. Well. It's a great point because their coach, Luca, had said that they are still at base level. We take it easy in order to teach them the basics and how great that they're in a, a coaching environment that acknowledges the need to take it easy for the long-term athlete development. So smart. Look at that check on the right shoulder to make sure the rotation stops on that landing with great flow out. Really, really well done for this team of where they're at in their development. And you can see they're happy. Big smile, completely different personalities now that it's done, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Compared to the beginning as they take to the ice for their program. And Luca was explaining that they're the youngest in Bergamo among other eight senior teams that train with them. And it was lovely to see. I saw some footage from the Bergamo rink where they were watching, the other training mates were watching. And you know, it must be amazing for them to be part of that, that kind of family of people Going through the same challenges and exhaustion of training with you makes it so much easier to well, withstand. You not only love the skating, but you love the family that skate with you. And, yeah. and so, although you're going to the rink for skating, you're also going to the rink for your friends and your colleagues and your family members at this stage of your life. And it makes the whole experience enjoyable and very supportive as well. Let's take a look at the scores for the free program for Paulina and Gabriel. Sixty-seven point six zero. That's first in the free program. Now we get the nod of approval with a one hundred six point six seven, and that'll put this team currently in the first place. Well done. Good start to this competitive season and some experience gained. Except for they leave the kiss and cry too early. But anyway, that's okay. <laughs> that's a different issue. Our next team comes from Great Britain. Eighteen-year-old Lucy Hay and twenty-year-old Kyle McLeod, coached by Simon Briggs, Jason Briggs, Debbie Briggs. Family Briggs, 52.68, personal best, getting the conquest of space, shadows, and run, boy, run.
Lucy here and Kyle McLeod share a hug at the conclusion of their free skate. Because he's just a little bit fatigued towards the end. And we cannot underestimate the physicality of the pair's discipline and how utterly exhausting. The, they did a really good job on this. I've been watching them during the practice session. This was much more coordinated and tidy, I would say, in this program. They did look quite exhausted at the end. You can just see it's like, oh, thank gosh, this is over. You know, because it is very, very physical from so many different aspects. But I think for the stage that they are currently at, that was good. That was good. Lots of things to clean up, particularly in rotation in the air. I think Lucy wants to tighten those legs a bit as we watch. There's the twist. There's the split. Better than yesterday. Yeah, and see how the legs are just a little bent and a little sloppy in the air. But that's okay. That's the stage that they're at. No problem. Here's the double lutz. This is well done. Good flow up into the single axle. Step up into another single axle. Mission accomplished on that. It was good. Here's the group three lift up there. Nice, strong, and straight position by Lucy. Awesome. Turns are careful. Keep the flow going. So this is a little cautious. That's okay, but that's the stage that they're at. Great position for Lucy. Well done. Forward inside desk bar here. And watch the pick. The pick reaching back here. The left foot. That pick is straight in the ice. Pressure between the woman and the man. Allow that desk bar to go around at least two times. That is in at a level two. He's fighting hard for that rotation. There's the basics of throw, double loop, so good job. And they do so much. The David Richardson there with them. As you mentioned, the Briggs family and everybody behind the back of them, Jason Briggs, they work with remotely online. He in the States, so they connect with him a couple times a week online. They've gone to the ISU pair seminars in Berlin in spring. So the team behind them supporting them in as many ways as they can. And the improvement on last year very evident as a result of those efforts. Yeah, and that was nice. I mean, over the last couple of days, I've just seen this team get a little bit stronger, a little bit more confident, and nice to deliver pretty much everything they can do in the free program here. Lots of work to improve, but they did what they set out to do. As we take a look at the score, 69.10. That is first in the free program for Lucy and Kyle. Great job with the total competition score of 109.09 .09 as they take over the lead. Well done. Our next team comes from Israel. 15-year-old Sofina, Sofia and Kina and 70-year-old Nikita Kovalenko. And this is their very first Junior Grand Prix event. They need a 69.78 to take over the lead. And they'll skate the free program to On the Nature of Daylight and Donna Faith.
Sofia Enkina and Nikita Kovalenko from Israel. And well done to Nikita for making sure that second lift went up after the disappointment of the first lift. And you can see that they're two single skaters still earning. Oh, yeah. The, I wrote those notes a couple of days ago when I watched it. They have really good individual skills. We'll look at some of that. But the lifting skills are still yet uh, very much under construction. Strength of the upper body is really required, but also the use of the legs. And that didn't happen on the first, the, hand, the group four hand-to-hand -hand lift. We'll look at that. And that's not going to be far away. This young man will learn to lift this very nice he just needs some more time as we take a look at the double axles there it is nice steps up to a second double axle well done you don't often see that turn out but you don't often see that in the junior and then we come down to the ice for the triple soccer watch carefully in between so you can see both and there you go under rotation on the throw triple soccer here's the throw on the triple soccer pardon me here's the throw triple flip Looks good in the air, just slow on the checkout, breaking forward as well, but didn't take the fall. Here's the lift that does not push up, though you have to lift with your legs, follow through with your arms to get that lift up, but better to bring it down safely. And did a good job with that. Here's the throw triple loop. Again, good timing on the takeoff, just the checkout is still not quite familiar enough to know when to punch that free leg back as we see just the ending pose. So for Sofia and Nikita, some good individual skills, pairs, lots to work on still. Good to see the connection now in the kiss and crying. It's so interesting to me, the base values assigned to the different elements and certainly the lifts, they are quite heavily weighted. Four or five points dependent on level can go higher. And so, you know, it's almost like a sign that you can have two great single skaters and you can see the side-by-side -side triple style or the side-by-side -side double axle sequence, but you know, the lifts are weighted to prioritize the pair's elements, I suppose. Oh, for sure. It's the pair discipline. So what is the pair discipline? How does it define itself? Well, lifts and throws yeah. and, you know, death spirals and things like that that make it the discipline that it is with the addition of some single stuff as well. Okay, now they're discussing, <laughs> okay, should we show the heart? Oh, okay, no, I'm not doing it, right? <laughs> okay. Here we go. Let's take a look at the scores for Sofia and Nikita. 65.10. That's third in the free program. For a total competition score of 104.42. And that will put them into third place at this stage of the competition. Here's a look at your top five teams. And we'll see the final group coming up after the ice free service. You will see the standings and There'll be the fight, if you will, not the fight, the, the challenge for the podium and those medals will be coming up after the ice cream service team. And there, again, is the look at the leaderboard, 109, 106, 104, so relatively close to the top three teams at the moment. Mark, ice cream service team, you know what's up. Let us know. Yes, yes indeed. Let's have a look again. The World's Promo for Montreal in March of next year. And then on to the mic Up series with Valtteri Rizzo being mic up from the event in Bangkok last week. Such an entertaining ice yeah. dance coach. Yeah. So what funny. a personality that and, guy has. Oh, he's amazing. And then to Brian Joubert, former world champion in the men's singles. He was mic'd up last year when we were in Courchevel. And then another look at this beautiful city of Linz by air from the drone shops. Okay, so we'll take a short break. We'll be back right after this.
Oh, but where do you buy the shoes? It's a... <laughs> the other one, I like two. This one is too much to me. Too much yeah. for you? Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> È un ordine, vieni su questo canale con noi, vieni, sì, mi fa piacere, sì, sì, assolutamente sì. Per cui vai tranquillo come stamattina senza nessun problema. Mi fa, ma sei una super star, faccio, no, sono vecchio. Bend, ok, pass, e look crazy, dance. Okay, spend time to watch the judges on the ice. Bring them with you on the ice. Okay, make them dance. Okay, don't be boring. Okay, you are trained to do this one. You go, like this. Guys. Bene, così, capito? Tutto qua, eh? È tutto qua, capito? Presente in ogni passo. Oh, devi essere showman. Capito? Stai con lei, però. Stai con lei. One, two, three, four. One, two. Come on. meno sei punti e vediamo quanto prendiamo con la caduta e tutto saranno dieci cioè il secondo e il terzo possiamo giocare eh no third place è ok gli devi dare il mio numero di telefono he has everything he has everything oh he, you're lazy you need to give it to me eh. I am the assistant of the assistant, and he is my assistant. It's a long line. Tu dois penser à ce que tu dois faire, d'accord? Comment? <rire> bon, ça va, mon grand Nickel. Nickel. La vie est belle. Très bien. Mais ça, c'est normal, ça. Après, on en parlera. Ah, mais es, es très bien ce que tu me fais, là. Ouais. Maintenant, sache un truc, le stress, il faut, faut que tu l'aies. C'est indispensable. La seule chose, c'est que tu dois le contrôler. Et tu pourras le contrôler si tu contrôles ta respiration. Ok Tu rentres sur piste, tu descends comment les jambes là Ouais. Tu rentres sur piste, tu rentres dedans. Hein Top. Merci Brigitte. Bravo mon petit. Ah ben c'était super bien. Bravo, bravo. Après, bon, on verra le score, hein. ça suit, ça suit pas, mais euh... ben, on verra, parce qu'après, il y a des pirouettes, tu vois. Hein. Ben, C'est au niveau des euh, GOE, quoi. La dernière, tu vois, t'as pas le temps de faire la pirouette combinée, pareil. Il faut voir cette transition. Jean a obtenu un total de 56 points 80. Ce qui va se en c'est bien patiné. Bon, hein, monsieur. Ouais, je suis content. C'est ton record, là, non Ouais, mon record, c'était 40 
Vai si dimostra.
Welcome back, everyone, to Linz, Austria, the final group in the Paris Free Program. Day two of competition. This is the first medal event as we take a look at warm up group number three. And assuming that the podium finishes are within these four teams, and there'll be a battle for the bronze and for the gold. Mark Hanrad is joining us from his studio at home. Mark, can you have a nice break? Yes, a nice break and an amazing touch that I've just heard about that Skate Austria, the organizing committee that are putting on this event have done is that every time that a uh, skater leaves the ice, the coordinators play music of the country that the skater represents. And it was actually Luke Wang that's in this group that, that noticed that and drew it to our attention. Yeah, they've done that for a couple of years now. And I don't know how they do that, but they, you know, okay. it's just amazing. It's a tremendous amount of organization. Yeah, as if it's not challenging enough just to worry about playing the right music at the right time. To be able to then find a piece of music that represents them is amazing. Great effort from the organizers. It'll be interesting to see, knowing that the top two teams are relatively new, as to how they will fare with the pressure of competition because both, I think, for Flores and Wang in second place and for Ariano Kent and Liberté Laurent, they are new, so they're not as tried and tested, if you like, and so we just hope that they'll be able to tap into the training that they'll have done over the summer months to give their best performances here. Yeah, I had a chance to speak with, uh, with um, uh, Charlie, and he was saying that... Um, he said that was the weirdest fall. He says because I was going back. This is the <laughs> yeah. program. I was going back to my yeah. heel, and you know, there's nothing behind you, and there was no way to save it. He was just glad that he sort of got up quickly, and from that, he says, "I hope we don't do that today." That's for sure. But you know, they they were pretty experienced pair of skaters who are new uh -huh. together. But they've they've come together very quickly. So we'll see what happens in this their first international competition as a team. Nice throw, double loop there. I think the French team, perhaps actually the longest team together of this group. So it'll be interesting to see how their pairs elements are reflected. And as we look at Martina and Charlie, and throw a double up. Look at the Ooh, distance. Whoa. Nice. Oh. Whoa, that was close. It was almost like a nice dance warm up. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I never forget the the warm up at the Olympics in Salt Lake. Seeing the video of the collision from the top two teams and the warm up mm. for the free skate, just <laughs> that was a confirmation that it, it can still get skated in the pairs warm ups as well. That was a dramatic moment. In television <laughs> loved that because it created, you know, the story. If you drama. Will. Yeah. <laughs> as we see, Olivia Flores. It's, Amazing to think that her sister, who's a competitive ice dancer, was choreographing their parents' free skate. So great to see that the investment that the parents have made in the education yeah. of one yeah. sister is paying off yeah. in the a family affair. Yeah, money's going coming in and one money's going out. <laughs> That's okay. It's your kids and you do what you as a parent, as you well know, and you've got two young children, you do whatever you can to help them pursue their dreams. Oh boy, here we go. <laughs> There's, yep. there. oh my <laughs> gosh. There's energy, I gotta give them first place right at this moment in the competition for the best cheerleading. Yeah. I mean, Canada's got a good, I don't know, we have those moves. I mean, yeah, wow. I, I just, wow. Kayla Smith last year, Eliana Peel, taking the mantle for <laughs> the American cheerleader. And uh, you know what, there is, Really nice to see that they've not gone back to the hotel to rest. You could, you know, argue that they should be going back to rest and, and fuel their bodies in preparation for tomorrow. But yeah, not not, not in juniors. I mean, they just they, <laughs> yeah. want, they they just want to take everything in and be part of the team and memories for a lifetime. Really, where it all starts. And I would argue that the junior experience is something that lives perhaps a little bit deeper, a little bit longer than all the senior years, which are wonderful years as well. There's no question, but they're more business-like, as you mentioned a little earlier in the broadcast. So 
the juniors, it's still pretty pure and innocent and full of joy. And I, I understand that the, um, <laughs> I understand that the after parties are fun too. The juniors not scared to get together after the event and let their hair down, and you know they're they're welcome to that given the efforts that they've done in getting themselves. Well, getting to ready. meet, yeah, getting to meet. Uh, you know, skaters from around the world. I mean, they don't get that very often. Is that this is their first journey into international sport? Um, it's pretty cool getting to meet different athletes in your category or in the event, anyways. Anywhere from China to France and Germany and Great Britain and Canada, all over the place. Just you know, as a, as a life experience here, like these moments what other teenagers are exposed to the you know this level of thrill excitement pressure yeah the roller coaster of emotions and you can see just a few words of not strategy but i would say just calmness by the coach preparing the athletes this will be the first team out and so they've already done the warm-up and now they're just group hug there as we wow, zoom nice. in and can see a moment private moment a little fist pump there as well before this team will take the ice for the free program. They're in contention for a medal. And they'll come down to the free program. For our first team, coming from France, Romain Telemark and Luca Colin, 13 to 17 years of age. This is their first Junior Grand Prix event. And fourth after the third. They're going to need a 65.64 to take the lead.
Romain Telemac and Lucas Coulon from France. And you talked about the French input in terms of the, the creativity and interesting to see them choose such original music for the free skate for this young French pair. Yeah. Well, they had some success in some of the elements and it'll be interesting. I took the group five toe lift really careful lift but they came back with a group three lift which is significantly better quality well, look at the difference yeah. between those two lifts and here is the double twist off the top of the program in a level two so that's pretty good nice speed there's the double lutz after that was easy and here is the the group five toe lift pull through underneath watch the right foot pick to the ice lift goes up but just a little cautious. You can see a little bit of snow in the turns there for Luca. They get it done, no problem there. But this next left, there's no problem. The group three left, mm, this will come up. I wonder if I have it. Oh, there it is, here it is. Hey. Nice and smooth, good speed. Look at the ice coverage here. Nice and smooth turns, good position by Romain. Nice arch on that platter as well, and then the dismount. So distinctly two different quality in those lifts. Nice throw, double flip, and the double flip, double toe right at the end of the program. Just a bit of a step oh. out there, and but overall. Interesting construction of the program because they're obviously not using the harder side-by-sides or the harder throws. So just a different element construction, the composition of the program than perhaps we'd see from others who've got more challenging technical elements. Yeah, it was interesting to see the three jump combination at the end of the program. Yeah. Different. Not conventional. <laughs> he looks shaking his head going. <laughs> yeah, always listen, watching their facial expressions and body language, kind of get a feel for how they feel about the program. And overall, I think that was pretty good for the stage of development this team is at. Certainly some things they like back, but not bad and, at all. Yeah, and they, they did the Bavarian Open, which is really big international. That was where they were first in the advanced novice competition. So obviously now pushing into juniors, 13 years old, 17 years old. So mm. they should be delighted to find themselves in this top group after the short program. And it looks like they're going to maintain that above the six other teams that have already competed. Yeah, and then it'll be up to the next team. I mean, will they actually move up a spot under the bronze medal position? We'll see. And their coach is listed as Emily Anai Telemach. So I have to assume a relation, but I'm not sure exactly. But you know, again, confirming that this family affair, so many of the skaters working with parents and family members to support them. Yeah, it, it's right. You know, it's true. It's, you seem to, we seem to see that more often now than we did in the past where families, full families are involved from a coaching perspective and even some of the siblings are coaching mm -hmm. their yes, lots, and family yeah. members, yeah. And there's quite a few. There was five uh, reviews, pardon me, four reviews coming in for the technical panel. They just cleared those out, so we should get the scores in just a few moments. Sometimes it takes a little bit longer. There's a lot of work for the technical panel. <laughs> nice dance as well. But in pair skating, <laughs> especially in juniors, there's lots to look at here. It's not always 100% clear. Good to see that of the 10 elements, eight of them had a, a good grade of execution or at least base value. So that's sign that this is a team that's well prepared and, and attempted elements that were within their skill set at this stage, not going for anything beyond what they're capable of. Yeah, that's a good point, Mark. And when you take a look at the report card, you sort of get a feel for, okay, my quality is getting better, so maybe we can start to move the level of difficulty up. So the strategy between how difficult do I want my elements versus how much is it costing me or am I gaining on the GOE score, the, the quality? So there's two sort of strategies. And quite often, early on in the system, coaches were all going for the most difficult elements. And then they yeah. sort of realized, hmm, maybe we should just go for quality here. Here's the score, 76 points for the free program. <laughs> he goes, wow, that's a good awesome. reaction. <laughs> Great reaction. That's first place in the free. And total competition score of 119.46.
I think <laughs> they're thrilled. There you go. They hey. are thrilled. Look at that. <laughs> Another group hug. Good 10 point lead. Our next team also has a shot at the podium. 13 year old Wenning Shi and 18 year old Ji Yu Wang from China. They're in the short program. They only need a 74.19 to take the lead. We don't actually have a personal best score for them. We'll see what happens in the free program as they skate to Mad World. A couple of really admirable elements went from winning Xi and Xi Yu Wang from China. Final lift. Such speed of rotation, Ted, at the end of the program when the exhaustion levels are high and the pairs combo spin coming at level four at the first of those that we've seen of the event so far. Yeah, it's interesting to watch this team if you break it apart. Where are they at on the development pathway? They certainly got some strong elements. Uh, but the single elements here, a little weak, that double axe under-rotated by Wenning, and 
got sort of disjointed in that three jump combination. Here's the twist. Watch how quickly this gets into there. There's the split. Fast for the twist. This is in at a level two. So getting two of the four features. Here's the triple saco. This was a problem for winning as well. Watch her under rotation. This is forward. It's a downgrade plus the fall. So that was a costly mistake. But good that they're trying at this stage. There's no harm done. They're, they're developing here. And this is the back inside death spiral. This is pretty well done. Some of the teams you'll see the forward inside, which is a little easier than this one. Hangs on, gets the second revolution, perhaps. Comes into level two. And it, Look at that, that group by reverse oh, mark yeah. is so difficult. The hardest lift in the repertoire. There's the change of hold, change of position. Pretty good flow across the ice. And this is in level four. So that's pretty good to get all level uh, four feature on this with a plus GOE of 7.58 for that one element. Sorry, Mark. Massive, yeah, massive, isn't it? When you can get group five lifting at level four with a positive GOE, so valuable to the total score. Interesting to see now, because they have some strong pair elements, where they will go with the skating skills, because that's obviously something that they could still develop a bit more knee action, more extension on each stroke, and so I'd be interested to see how much they push that over the season. Yeah, and you mentioned a little earlier, you were surprised at um, the skating skills of the pair teams at the stage, because generally they, the Chinese skaters have really good skating skills, and this is a little weaker at the stage. It's yeah. okay. Go ahead. A different approach, different coaching strategies, and that's what really fascinates me. You can see this is a team that's, you know, been pushing different elements, and that is something that's later to be developed. Yeah, I think so. Scores, 78.22. That is first for winning, and she, you. Total competition score, 123.50, and that will put this team currently into first place, which means they will take medal. What color? Yet to be determined by the next two teams. From the United States, Olivia Flores and Luke Wang, 16 to 19 years of age, second after the short program, but just 1.65 behind the Canadians. They'll need a 71.49 to take the lead, and they'll skate to the force theme.
Well, from the landing of that throw triple soccer, that was so exciting, concluding their Star Wars free skate for Olivia Flores and Luke Wang. Yeah, it was interesting, Mark. It was kind of like the choreographic step in the ice dance coming right at the judges' <laughs> panel right at the end. Pretty dramatic. And they said that, you know, they've chosen this Star Wars, the cover of Star Wars by Samuel King. And Luke said that they both have extremely strong personalities and wanted to play Luke and Leila and show that. And even down to the hair, you know, they're totally well, committed to that and well, the choreography by Drew Meekins. And you can see it, they're both physically very strong athletes. Here's the twist. Nice, comes in at a level two. Probably didn't get the split on the top of that element. Now here's the opening single axle, step up, double axle. Look at the speed between them. Squeak out there for Luke. And here's this group, three left, two hands. Left hand, watch the change of position right there. Now she's sitting on his right hand. And then the dismount, that is in a level four. So all four features there. Here is the throw triple loop. Hand goes down. And there's the group five, reverse left. Watch the change of hand right here. It's just awkward. The leg has to lift over right there, over his right hand. Then he changes the position onto the right hip. And that's just a little wobbly, it wasn't really a smooth turn, it just got a little bit out of control, but still really difficult lift in at a level three. Here's the throw triple sow near the end. This was nicely done, solid on the landing. As you said, lots of energy into the end of the program. And as they're joined by the 1982 Olympic champion, it's amazing to think that this is a team that just new to pairs, and although we've acknowledged you know, that the lifts were a little bit of a struggle, still so new to the discipline. So managing to do two throw triples and get those lifts done convincingly. I'm really impressed and excited to see them because they, alongside their coach and choreographer Drew Meekins, obviously eager to showcase not just technical elements, but a little bit of personality in their performance as well. They're a commanding team on the ice. You just sense this power, and okay, I know it's the Star Wars team, and I don't mean, I don't mean it's related to that. These are two very strong athletes that are accelerating all the time. So they've got some work to, on refinement, perhaps, and, you know, as they, as they grow, and they'll change maybe different types of approaches to their program, but this is the perfect program for this team at this stage. And we've seen the reigning world junior champions have, now they've parted ways and Daniel's gone on to pursue other things. So it's great to see then that America has now got another team that could potentially vie for a junior world title. We'll see how the season pans out and how things progress, but certainly if the improvement rate can be as exponential as the, it's been since they started. The, the United States is getting stronger in all the disciplines. I'm telling you, they're really coming on. Let's take a look at the free program score for this team. 95.20, and that's a big wow for Olivia and Luke. That's obviously first place in the free program. Let's see the total score for the competition, 147.22. That's huge. Well, certainly, they're sitting in first place. There's only one team that can beat them, and that's the Canadians. We'll see what happens. They only have a 1.65 lead after the short. We're going to need to skate a strong program from Canada. Martina, Ariana, Kent, and Charlie Le Liberté de Laurent. She's 16, Charlie is 18, first season together. We've had pair partners before, but this is their first international competition together. Skating to Radioactive by Imagine Dragon. <laughs> Thank you. 
<laughs> well, fantastic, fantastic performance from Martina yeah. Ariano, Ken, and Charlie Lely Portillo. I like the little pat on the shoulders. Way to go, way to go. <laughs> yeah, there's the Canadian cheer team there, wearing the red and white. Boy, some beautiful throws. That throw chip a loop was so sweet. It was incredible. And to then stick that Salco, she dug so deep into her knee bend. Such strength showcased by Martina there on the later throw. Yeah, and will this be enough? It's ever so close. We'll find out in just a minute. There's the twist. That is in. That was a bit of a trouble. Broke forward a little bit there. Level two on the triple twist. Double axles nice, patiently, right up in the second double axle, solid, taking off and landing at the same time. Here's the group three lift. This was a little rougher than the second lift. Difficult to turn the opposite direction, stop the rotation, a little loss of balance there, and go back in the other direction. That's a feature, of course, that is in a level four with just a point zero seven. Here's the throw triple loop. Look at this, right on top, riding that oh, edge, strong back, nice. just beautiful. 1.29 plus GOE on that one element, Mark. And I mean, I don't know Martina, but she just seems to epitomize everything that I so admire in a pairs woman. She, you know, she's obviously a great skater, elegant. This landing, late in the program, yeah. legs are burning, utterly exhausted. Keeps the Thinks hand off nope. the ice. <laughs> she keeps the hand off the ice. This was really strong body core. Wow. Awesome. Well, they, they need the a 93.56 to win the gold here. A 93.56 in the free program to take the title. Will it be enough? Both teams really outstanding. Really, you know, a, a great example of up and coming teams. And mm. especially, and particularly impressive, knowing these guys teamed up in spring. Yeah, that's great. And hopefully, these two teams see each other again this season. I'm most certain they will somewhere. Maybe in the final, we'll find out. Here it is. They need a 93.56 to win. And there it is, 104.61. That is first in the free program. <laughs> Victory signs for 158.28 as Martina and Charlie from Canada take the title here in Linz. Mark andre Craig, their coach, fist pumps all around and smiles as well. Great job. <laughs> that was kind of pathetic, but you know. <laughs> that was awesome. Yeah, great result. Yeah, terrific. As we take a look at the final standings in the pairs event, of course, medals will be presented at the end of the women's. 158.28 for Martina and Charlie. Olivia and Luke from the United States, 147.22 and 123.50 for Wenning and Chi Yu from China. And there is a look at the rest of the field in the pairs event. Well, that concludes the coverage of the Paris Free Program. Up next will be the Women's Free Program. It is a long event, but there's some great skaters. They didn't all skate great yesterday, but we're expecting much more today in the Free Program. And that will begin at 1,700 hours here local time in Linz, Austria. We hope you've enjoyed coverage of the Paris Free Program. For Mark Hanready, I'm Ted Barton. Thank you for watching. Make sure you join us for the Women's Free Program coming right up.